Everybody curious about the future of PC technology, or at least what's coming next year, we asked Lloyd Case from ImprobableInsights.com for his analysis on what to expect in 2010. Lloyd, welcome back to the show. Good to see you. You've been doing a ton of freelance work lately. Yeah. Who you Maximum PC, Tom's Hardware, Anantech. What's been the Hot Hardware? What's the What's your favorite article so far? Uh, probably the one that was where I wrote about the uh, Radeon HD5870 because it was so out of left field, nobody expected ATI to do that well. It, it's just ridiculously fast. Yes. Even, and actually I guess Trolby do a true HD support over the HDMI. That's what I hear, yep. Hmm. Of course, <laughs> no one we know, even in the HD theater community, seems to actually have a receiver that supports Trolby true HD, or I guess we do, we have to have someone back, but in our home, it would be nice just once to have a receiver that supported True HD. Well, you know, you, we can dream. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, CES is coming up. I'm sure they'll show some off there, right? Oh my goodness. Well, I, let me rephrase it. One that I can actually afford. There you go. <laughs> or justify. It's one that doesn't cost more than a month's rent. Anyhow, right. what's coming up in, I guess, should we start with CPUs? Is that kind of where the big yeah. changes Yeah, the magic going? number is 32. 32 nanometers. That's right. So that's going to be the next sort of right. phasing down in production. That's right. Intel's Deciding transitioning that. to 32 nanometers starting in early next year, very early next year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we'll probably see some stuff at CES time frame. Okay. Um, both on laptops and desktops. They've got this uh, six-core monster called Gulf Town that they'll ship, uh, as well as some interesting low power. When I say low power, I mean it consumes low power, but they're actually pretty powerful CPUs. I've been playing around with one of them. So we're talking, what we're talking about here is basically they shrink the die that basically the, the circuitry takes up less space and it also usually right. means a reduction in power and a mm -hmm. little bit of a performance boost. Yep. And also this thing has an AES encryption acceleration. Oh, wow. So we kind of need. So it's a spook processor. Right. <laughs> so what's going on, or I should actually say it's probably a digital rights management processor. The uh, What's going on with Larrabee? Is it gone? It's become what Intel likes to call a development platform, which means it's not going to ever see the light of day. Ooh. Yeah, some, it's possible some die shrunk super version of it may show up someday, it won't be called Larrabee, but it's, as far as next year goes, it's not coming. So they basically, they went out and went down and a, they, they took their fork, they ticked or talked, and they went down that end and it turned out to be dead. I think so, uh, kind of a dead end, but only because, you know, ATI came out of the 5870 and I think Intel believed they could kind of keep up with sort of the HD 4870, 4890 right. kind of performance, but with NVIDIA coming out of their, their DirectX 11 part soon, I mean, there's just no way they could have kept up. So maybe in the future we'll see a serious 3D entry from Intel. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. What about, uh, the, there was a Finnish crew, did you see? Yes, there's, a, there's some Finnish, this is a really interesting point. Every time somebody comes up, you know, Intel comes out 30 nanometer and another die shrink and they're talking right. about 22 in the future, everybody says, where's the limit? You know, sometimes you're going to, some Finnish guys and some people working with some researchers in Australia recently developed a transistor where the active side is one atom wide. So you're basically literally talking like an atom of transistor, an atom of insulator, another right. atom of transistor. Uh, you know, I didn't have, I don't have all the details and what all those little parts pulled up, but clearly we have a long ways to go, even with traditional types of transistor technology. Because a couple of years ago, it's like the heat, it won't work. We're going to go from copper right. to optical computing, and and so is is that so? Has that been staved off the need for for a little while? Yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of research going on those alternative computing models, but uh, I think that the traditional model is still going to hold true for a while. Anything coming up from AMD that we're looking towards in the early 210? Uh, not early, probably mid-year mid they're going to come out with some stuff. They're, they're pushing their 32 nanometer stuff at some point. Of course, they're trailing Intel. Mm -hmm. They've got their, what they call their fusion initiative, where they're going to put graphics on the CPU. Uh, okay. Intel is shipping a version of their next generation 32 nanometer stuff with the graphics, but it's really a separate chip in the package, mm -hmm. not actually integrated onto the die. And that's all going to be sort of the, the medium to low end right. units. GPU computing, what's going on with that? I think this year, uh, 2010, is the year, the sort of the proof of concept year. Well, I shouldn't say that. The proof of concept has already happened. It's going to be sort of the make or break year. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, there's no question that GPUs are very useful. I mean, uh, you know, the new movie Avatar, a lot of stuff was rendered on GPUs and stuff like that. But I think in terms of mainstream applications that you run on your notebook PC or your desktop, mm -hmm. where everybody's using them, I think this is sort of the make or break year for that. And I'm talking about non-gaming apps, obviously. And, and I see, So basically, there's like gaming apps that obviously use the, the GPU. Right. Right. There's uh, like Blu-ray decoding or, or MPEG-4 right. decoding that takes advantage of some right. CPUs mm -hmm. or GPUs, right. graphics processing unit. So, but the, there's always been a theory that they'll be, oh, you'll encode your files and your right. GPU will speed or, them up. Or you know, you'll you'll your digital photo or video editing will will be sped up and. 
other types of applications that are sort of undefined right now for in terms of what people actually do on but, PCs. But the reality is at this point the CPUs for most people are so powerful there's not much point in offloading a lot of stuff. Yeah, although when I batch, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe, I'm of course kind of an exception to rule, but when I batch up a bunch of raw images from right. my SLR to, to uh, for noise reduction, right. I wish I had something faster. I, and or you know, and whenever we're editing video, we always want something right. faster when we're applying a filter right. or something. So basically, 2010 make or break. Either somebody's so. finally going to make a is, a is, killer is, app of some kind. Yeah, I think so. it, if if they're going to do it, I think this is the year they need to do it. Is it is it because of the discrepancies between going with ATA or NVIDIA to use GPU? No, I think one of the cool things about it, the reason I think this is a make or break here is that the standards are finally there. You can use one standard to develop for both ATI and in, NVIDIA. You know, there's DirectX right. 11 compute. There's OpenCL. Two uh, very different standards, and they can run on different platforms like Linux. And sure. so, I mean, obviously, DirectX is, is Windows only, and then Apple supporting OpenCL. So you have one or two very standard ways now of developing the GPU. You don't have to be specific to one right. piece of hardware anymore. So I think that's why this is a make or break here in a lot of ways. So you may actually be the only bigger ebook reader or digital book fanatic yeah. that I know of that's probably even more into them than, than Veronica. Well, I, I mean, I carried a Kindle too around Europe, and I love having all those books in my back. You know, I carried, I say, I carried 32 pounds of books around in, in you know, one, less than a pound. <laughs> but, um, you know, and I, I'm really, I am kind of bullish on the concept of ebooks, mm -hmm. but I think what we've seen is what I've called the circular firing squad of ebook readers, <laughs> in that it used to be there's Moby Pocket and it's right. standard, and you had one standard and everybody's cool. Then the Kindle came out, and then you kind of had that's DRM, but it's sort of loosely based on Moby Pocket. Right. And now, it's everybody's basically tied to Amazon and the Kindle. That's and right, and then anymore. everybody's in the same thing. I mean, they're doing the sort of App Store version. You have the Barnes and Noble Nook, which is tied to Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. and you know, Google's doing its own thing. And it's just very confusing now. It's going to become even more confusing. But but Barnes and Noble and Sony are both saying that that they're supporting an open standard. Right. Sure, and <laughs> I believe that when I see it. I, I think I think eventually it will sort of shake out in one standard. But I think this whole po jockeying for sort of the App Store model is sort of confusing people and mm -hmm. slowing things down. And or, is, you know, Cory Doctorow would say it's just nothing should be locked down with DRM. Finally, the music industry right. has learned. When will everyone else follow suit? These are not <laughs> the droids you're looking for. <laughs> well, we'll have to see what happens. I mean, people want their content protected in the sense of wanting to, you know, make their revenue. Yeah, authors want to get paid. That's just right. like musicians want to get paid, just right. like movie studios want to And we're get starting paid. to see alternate models for, uh, you know, particularly in the music world now, for making money. So maybe it'll happen, but we'll have to see. You're not holding your breath. I think it's going to be a slow process because we st I, even the music industry ha hasn't figured out all those alternate models, right? No Although comments. the movie industry had its biggest year ever, despite all of the problems with piracy. So what does that say? Obviously, we need to put more butts in the theater seats. Right. <laughs> and you know, the people are buying discs and still and watching on Hulu. And Hulu is going to become. It'll be interesting to see whether the internet models like Hulu will become. And, and if they go the paid model, will be successful when they go pay. You're going to be all over CES this year. Who are you going to be covering it for? I'm going to be covering for Tom's Hardware, mm -hmm. and I'll be focusing mainly on high-end PC enthusiast stuff. So that's that's my thing. And and. Despite that's my fo despite the fact that's my focus, my dance cards are almost full. I mean, lots it's, of and stuff. Yeah, there's a ton. We, everybody was afraid that there was going to be nothing announced at CES this year. It looks to be the. I think it, people are just announcing everything at CES this year. Right, right. A lot of the other shows at CES. Well, CES has become what a lot of other shows used to be. It's kind of become the mega show now. Lloyd. Excellent stuff as always. Ladies and gentlemen, you can catch up with more of Lloyd's work at ImprobableInsights.com. 